David Cameron is facing growing pressure from his own party over whether to hold a referendum on leaving Europe. The Prime Minister has told MPs they must vote against a referendum in the Commons tomorrow. But more than 70 backbenchers are preparing to rebel, accusing him of being out of touch with public opinion. A YouGov poll carried out for the Sunday Times found 66% of people want a referendum on Britain's position in the EU. A similar survey in the Mail on Sunday found 64% of people think Britain should not stay in the EU on current terms. And the majority also think David Cameron's wrong to impose a three-line whip on his party. 80% say MPs should be given a free vote on the issue tomorrow. The reason the government's got a, a bit of an, a problem here with its backbenches is there's just an impression and a feeling, rightly or wrongly, that basically the government just wants to put this in the deep freeze and not talk about the issue. The European Union is actually one of the causes of economic stagnation and that the burden of regulation that just comes year after year is one of the causes. So I think this idea that, oh, we must deal, you know, now is not the time to talk about it. You know, we've got a crisis in the Eurozone problems with our economy. Uh, you know, if now is not the time to try and address the shortcomings of the EU, when is the time? It would be an enormous distraction from the urgent task of focusing all the efforts of government on meeting the economic challenge, on growing economic recovery and on creating jobs if the political class were to be diverted um, at this moment in time or in the near future to arguing about whether we should have a referendum on our membership of the European Union. Well, the leader of UKIP, Nigel Farage, joins us live from Brussels. Uh, afternoon to you, Mr Farage. Um, a distraction, various other words being used about why yeah. there shouldn't be a referendum. Have you, have, has the campaign for and got the timing wrong on this? No, certainly not. I mean, there's never been a time when the European question has been further up the agenda. When we talk about Europe, we're not talking about treaties. We're talking about open border immigration. We're talking about human rights. We're talking about masses of regulation on, on our small and medium-sized businesses. We're talking about a threat to our biggest industry in the city of London. And we're talking about bailout funds and the extent to which we're going to be liable for what happens in Greece. So this is absolutely fundamental to Britain's economic recovery. Now is the time. Three-line whip for the Conservatives. Ed Miliband's indicated which way he, yeah. he will go uh, as well. I mean, it's not going to get through. It might be uh, damaging in some way to the political parties, but it's, it's not going to happen, is it? Well, I mean, tomorrow's vote is supposed to be advisory, but with all three party leaders having put on three-line whips, what they're showing for the British public, indeed for their own MPs, is absolute contempt. And I think that the result of tomorrow will be huge disappointment out there in the country and a lot of people saying, what on earth is the point of me supporting my traditional party when they're perfectly happy for most of my laws to be made somewhere else and they won't even ask my opinion. So we in UKIP view tomorrow as a very big opportunity. Um, it's interesting though what the polls are saying, aren't they? Because they aren't necessarily going along with what you say. Most people say yes, they do want a referendum, but actually in a referendum uh, the majority would not vote to leave the EU. D well, does... that, that depends how you ask the question. If you say, do you want to stay in or get out, then it's about 52% say we should get out. If you give people the soft option of renegotiation, many will plump for that. The key figure is only one in five British voters wants to maintain our relationship with the EU on current terms. So, you know, less than 20% of the country supports the current EU deal, and that, I think, is the really significant figure. Well, one more question on the, on the referendum before we, we go on to talk about the Eurozone, the, the meeting going on there. Um, I, I believe you've indicated that you might not field candidates in, in constituencies where MPs uh, vote for a referendum. Is that true? No. No, what I've said is that if there are me members of Parliament tomorrow who ignore the three-line whip, ignore their party leaders, who put the interests of the country and their constituency first, we will view them more favourably, but I'm not giving any cast-iron guarantees about what we'll do at the next general election. OK, uh, the, the Eurozone then, crisis meetings, we keep talking about them, yeah. don't we? Um, uh, how frustrating is it for you being there, watching what is going on, and, and the waiting continues? Well, I think for most of the journalists that are here, it's a bit like watching paint dry today. <laughs> uh, but what is interesting is the, the, the position of Osborne and Cameron. They are the biggest cheerleaders in the whole of Europe for 17 countries to abolish their democracies and move towards a European government. And that, I think, when we try and analyse 
What does the British, you know, where do the Tories really stand on Europe? What we're seeing is the most pro EU government possibly ever. Nigel Farage, thank you for joining us today. Thank you.